Okay, so we're going to look uh, first of all at the um, light independent reaction or what's also known as the Calvin cycle. Um, as the name suggests, light independent reaction it doesn't require light to be present. Now, the first step of this, we're going to start off with carbon dioxide entering our cycle. Now, this is worth, just before we get into the cycle, thinking about the pathway that carbon dioxide has to take, because it's actually quite a long pathway. It's going to diffuse from the air outside, it's going to come in through the stomata, it then has to enter this spongy mesophyll layer, where it will diffuse through the spaces between uh, these cells. Once it reaches the palisade cells, it then has to diffuse through the cellulose cell wall, through the cell membrane of the palisade cells, into the cytoplasm, through the chloroplast envelope or the chloroplast membrane, remember this is a double membrane structure as well, and finally into the stroma. So it's actually quite a long pathway, um, but it's one that's worth being aware of and remembering all these different um, layers that it has to diffuse through before it actually gets into the stroma where the Calvin cycle is going to occur. Back to the Calvin cycle. First step is, or well, the first step we're going to deal with, is that carbon dioxide is combined with this molecule ribulose bisphosphate, which is a five carbon compound. Now, an important tip here is there's quite a few different compounds in here. The first time you refer to um, these molecules, you should always use the full name. After that, it's perfectly fine to um, use the abbreviation. If you get stuck and you can't remember the full name, by all means use the abbreviation, but um, ideally, we'd remember what that is first of all. So we've joined a five carbon compound to a one carbon compound, carbon dioxide. How does this work? Well, we, this is where we've got the enzyme, Rubisco, and it's not a very good drawing of it, is it? But never mind. This enzyme, Rubisco, the RUBP and the CO2 sit in there and it will combine the two things together. It actually makes a six carbon compound, as you'd expect, but it's very unstable and it's not actually been isolated yet. And that six carbon compound very quickly breaks down into a two carbon compound called glycerate 3 phosphate or GP. So the six carbon compound is broken down into two lots, this three carbon compound, GP. That is then um, used to create this compound, TP, uh, which is triose phosphate. And again, this is um, another three carbon compound. We don't need to know what all these steps are in here, apart from this bit. To convert GP to TP, you've got to phosphorylate it. So we've got ATP to ADP. Where's the phosphate group gone? It's gone on here, and we also need to reduce it, remembering that in this um, part of the cycle, it is reduced NADP that is present. So glycerate phosphate has been reduced and it has been phosphorylated. Where do the ATP and the reduced NADP come from? They come from the light dependent reaction. The triose phosphate is then converted into ribulose bisphosphate. In fact, five out of every six triose phosphates are used to convert into ribulose bisphosphate. And then we've completed the cycle. Now, the extra bit here is 
we also require ATP at this stage. So in other words, we're going to phosphorylate triosphosphate to RUBP. So we need ATP again. And to also add in the extra bits of the fate of these things. Triosphosphate, for example, um, is basically used to make hexoses, sugars, so things like glucose. So from that we can then store it as starch or cellulose for the cell walls. It can be used, it can make other isomers such as fructose, of course glucose and fructose together would make sucrose and this is the sugar that we're familiar with, um, table sugar if you like, this is how plants make it. GP, let's just use a different colour, can be used to synthesise amino acids and it can also be used to make fatty acids. Fatty acids plus glycerol, which is actually derived from TP, of course can be used to make lipids. And so from this cycle we can see all the various things that uh, plants need to make. Amino acids can of course be used to go and make proteins, lipids, fats and oils, and we've also got our carbohydrates. So now we've got those bits. I think the, the way to approach this is to have this first bit in your head the RUBP plus CO2, GP, TP, RUBP. So if I was going to um, simplify this to its simplest possible form, let's put it like this. There we go. And this is one of the things it's perhaps worth remembering um, to do the first thing as soon as you go into an exam. If you can remember that, write it down straight away, and then you're not going to have to remember it later on when it comes to uh, the question comes up. So before you even answer any questions or look at it, this might be one of the things you want to put in uh, on a bit of blank space somewhere on the uh, on the exam paper.